Uh, he says, my question is about fueling recovery rides. I've been trying to get my body composition where I'd like it to be uh, by reducing my, my fat percentage. This typically means running a daily deficit of four to 500 calories a day. Yikes. That's a lot. As it stands, I'm finding it hard to eat enough clean, healthy food daily to hit my BMR intake of 1,650 calories. Adding on in any additional cardio just exacerbates the situation. With that being said, I'm curious on days I do active recovery rides of 60 to 90 minutes. What should I take in on the bike? Without a high, without a high demand, I don't feel like I've, and he says in quotes, earned the sugars yet. So I'm just trying to think ahead of the following day where I have more intense workouts. For the record, every day I do mobility and flexibility routines for about 30 minutes, as well as resistance training between 30 to 45 minutes, which is already burning calories. Any help would be appreciated as I'm sure others have this same question. Chris is wrapped up into a bunch of knots here with this one. This is tricky. Um, yeah. Nate, can you kick us off on this just on, on your thoughts? Yeah. yeah. The, the first thing that comes out is, um, the, the phrase eat enough, clean, healthy food. The idea that like food is clean or unclean is, um, it's like associated with disorder eating in, in general and the way of like earning sugars too. That's, that's probably a great way not, or that's a, yeah, that's not the way to think about food. And I would challenge it's, it's tough because it's, you watch TikTok, which so one of us on the podcast watch, watches a lot of it. Uh, you not know, sure who. Yeah. Like two of us, actually. <laughs> I was just saying. <laughs> yeah. Let's us, look at screen actually. time. Yeah, yeah. I am over you. Uh, oh, no. Johnny, you TikTok <laughs> too now? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I watch TikTok quite a lot, but I don't think I rival you, Nate. And also, to be clear, I have nothing on your TikTok posting game. Nate's TikToks, if you haven't checked them out, you need to on TikTok well, and you. Instagram. You need to check Thank you. Out. See, I've just got good ones, too. Um, yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> what, what I'm trying to say is that on in pop culture, there is a definite thread that talks about you need clean food. You know, like you got to have, if it has more than this many ingredients, you shouldn't be eating it. You should feel guilty. You cannot eat sugar or else it's going to, uh, um, you know, make you fat and give you metabolic poison. disease, this sort of stuff. Yeah, exactly. That is poison. And uh, research does not back up what, what they're saying or they take, I mean, it's common stuff. They take a mechanism and then extrapolate out to re extrapolate it out to a result. And I would, it just makes it for like a really hard life. But what I, I don't understand is I, he says, as it stands, I'm finding it hard to eat enough air quotes, clean, f healthy food daily to hit my BMR intake of 1650 calories. So, I mean, eating 650 calories is pretty easy of food. Mm -hmm. If it's uh, air quotes clean or not, um, I don't, understand that how that could be hard like i've never had that problem where i can't eat 1600 calories that's i do that in a it's meal like, sometimes yeah it's like this, it's this like my, i had the oh, same sorry, I same exact thought um I, i'm wondering and i could be creating things if chris is attempting to cut out carbs is the only way that on these days is the only way that i could see 1650 being mm -hmm. harder to achieve um but yeah, like Nate said, like if I walked through like a standard, like today recovery day, like I have breakfast with two pieces of toast, two eggs and a little bit of protein. And then for lunch, I probably have like Costco has these teriyaki chicken bowls that are just rice, veggies and teriyaki chicken that are super easy to make on a work day at lunch. And then for dinner, probably rice, some sort of vegetable and then another protein. And if I didn't watch the portions, that could probably be easily a 2,500 calorie day and three meals. So I'm, I'm trying to understand too. Um, I'm, I might need more context on the 1650, but in my mind, <laughs> Nate and I are on the same page. We could do that in one meal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, the, here's the tough thing. I think when you eat a lot of fat and then, uh, that, that can, so, or sorry, if you're cutting fat as much as mm -hmm. possible, that's going to cut calories down. If you're cutting healthy carbohydrates down too. That's also going to make it tough. Like, yeah. you know, my meals are usually somewhere around like 600 to 800 calories. Uh, yep. That's what I take in. And if there's six to 800 calories, you can see how that would get you over that 1,650 calorie limit pretty well there. But the thing is, that's also like, we've talked about this before. It's a pretty high volume of food. You know, it's a lot of variety in terms of vegetables, whole grains, and, you know, starchy carbohydrates, that sort of stuff. So I think that there's a difference. It's probably what, what clean and healthy means to a person mm. is probably different than, than what it might actually be by definition. Uh, clean and healthy doesn't mean no carbohydrates. It yeah. doesn't mean an absolute lack of fat. It doesn't mean 
and a lack of protein, that, those sort of things. And that's the, that's the tough part. It can Absolutely. be really misconstrued. Well, to go a little bit past Chris, I would say, um, and we've touched on this before and Nate's a big proponent for it, but also protect your fat and protein. Like you cut them too much, you cut too much protein, you're going to lose muscle mass instead of fat mass. Um, and you cut too much fat, then experiencing being very, very tired because your body needs that to operate. So I would be very careful on cutting those too deep. Um, I think a standard approach would be if you wanted to go macro would be one gram per kilogram of body weight, maybe a little more for fat and then close to two, 1.8 to two for, for protein. Um, and then I never, even when I would cut weight, never cut it out of a recovery day, <laughs> like choose those big days where it's like hard to eat 5,000 calories or 3000 calories or 2000 calories, and then chop it at the end of that day. Um, while, while I have the mic, he, he mentioned fueling recovery rides. Um, I don't fuel recovery rides, not because I don't think they're worthy of sugars, but I actually choose to use those calories for dinner, like to have more rice or more vegetables, just cause I don't need it to complete that workout. So mentally, not that this is right or wrong. I'm just like, well, I could have a sleeve of blocks or I could have some more vegetables and rice. And I feel like that would better satiate my body on that day. And we've talked about this before, but pretty much a recovery day or a day off, I have pretty set meals with, you know, the same components, uh, a carbohydrate, some vegetables, lean protein, and then some fats. And then on those bigger days, I just add in simple sugars on top of that. So for bigger days, I'm adding in a pancake meal. And then during I'm having some sort of liquid sugar, right? More tan or cliff blocks or an SIS gel during. And then we've talked about this before, pretty much everything else stays the same. Maybe the portions come up, maybe I have a little more rice, but overall, I think just trying to be careful about where you take those carbs, like take them when you have the most burn and it, it's not noticeable, right? Like if you have a big day cutting out 400 calories can almost, you can forget about it. Like you, you feel satiated because that dinner is still so big. So, yeah, Chris, what, uh, so your question of you, so you do an active recovery ride of 60, 90 minutes, what should I take on the bike without a high demand? I don't feel like I've air quotes earned sugar yet, but I'm also trying to think ahead to the following day where I have more intense workouts. And that is the key part is thinking ahead to the following day. And the, the, there's two ways you could do it, or there's many ways you could do it. Um, the Alex approach well, so what you're worried about is you want to recover from these rides. And if you have a really big block, you want to, um, up glycogen, right? And actually in, inside of a workout, after you do a workout is a great time to actually get more glycogen into your muscles to recover. And depending on where you are in that active recovery ride for where you're like the, the how high your wattage is, just be careful that you're not doing too much where you're, it's really just going to like push you down and then you don't fuel and it's really bad. So this is how I would, I would do it a few different ways. One, you could do some kind of sugar during the ride. And I know people are going to say that cuts off all fat burning your blah, blah, blah. That doesn't cut off all fat burning, but it, it the, your goal of this is not to make it where, uh, there's the goal of this is not to like increase lipolysis, right? So you could do that. And then afterwards I would do a recovery shake with some protein and, um, sugar. You, you have this open that window that's closes slowly and why not use it? If it's recovery, you could do that. Or what Alex said, even you could have some real food afterwards. That's simple sugar, like pancakes. How good does that feel? I just did this recovery ride. I watched a, a TV show and then I'm going to eat a bunch of pancakes. Like there that sounds go. like a wonderful day, right? Watch Especially TikTok eat pancake. This, this is <laughs> why I don't eat. Yeah, dude, I've done that, right? 90 minutes of TikTok and you're just like, I need yes. a button on the, to like scroll up on the handlebars. Cause that's the only annoying thing is to reach over every time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there probably is something someone will make, but that, that, I mean, that's what I would do. And you don't, the, the earn the sugars, like that's, that's tough. That's a tough way to think about, uh, food and it will, it just makes life really hard. Uh, and I, I don't know, this is probably inside of this question, how to get, change the mindset around that. Um, but just, That's very, I just want you like, to be aware of it. Deep rooted. Like, I feel like, like, I don't want to throw the moms under the bus, but like, I feel like so many, um, people that like I encounter with that perspective on like earning food, like 
they're like, that's kind of a mom narrative of like that, that like parents don't think about when, when they talk about like earning their food and like, Oh, like I, I did, we did a hike. So I earned this dessert or Mm -hmm. something like that stuff is like super deep rooted, like doesn't just happen to us as athletes. Um, so it's hard to address, but it's tricky because in some cases, like, uh, sometimes the pendulum swings too far the other way. And then people feel that they don't deserve anything after doing something hard. It, it's, it's a complex thing to manage for sure. I, I I've, I've found, so Chris, I've, I've vacillated in between all sorts of extremes with how I deal this. And I have a complicated relationship with food and it's hard for me to manage this. The best way that I've found that is by trying to give my body the highest quality it can. Uh, I focus first on that and that's my main focus. And then anything else beside that, the next principle that I do is I try to make sure that my body is getting the fuel when it needs to get the fuel that I'm not depriving myself. And then if the thing that happens when you're really focusing on quality, and then you're focusing on fueling the work, you'll notice that you're hungry a whole lot less. You'll also notice that your body performs better on the bike. You get more improvement, you burn, and then, you know, you're, you're talking about a caloric balance and running a four to 500 calorie deficit. How cool would it be if you could burn four to 500 more calories on the bike within your standard training time window, right? Because you felt good and you were like fueling yourself the way you needed to. Wouldn't it be amazing? Especially in the context of like thinking ahead to the following days where they have more intense workouts. Like I would, you know, challenge Chris to like look critically at what they eat on their rest day or like how they fuel their recovery days before those intense workouts and like see how much better those next days feel. Because I know for me, like nutrition has like a, like few day effect. Like if I mess up and I eat half as much as I should, it takes me like two to three days to like start feeling good again. Absolutely. Same. And yeah, there's, I- we all do these long rides too. Right. So like, I want to talk about his deficit in particular here and focus on that. So I I'm, I'm, I'm pretty strongly against running those deficits in most cases. Now there's an episode of the ask or of the successful athletes podcast that you can look up with Jesse Fortson, one of our awesome copywriters here, Jesse was, he, in his own words, had an extreme case where he needed to lose a lot of weight. And we're talking hundreds of pounds that, that he was able to lose. That's different than talking about athletes that most of us, you know, most athletes, if you're listening to this right now, Yes, sure. You could say we all have a little bit to lose, but at the same time, you're probably a reasonably healthy person and you're training on a bike. You're not a normal person and you're probably close to where you need to be or already are where you need to be. So as a result, with all of this in mind, running a four to 500 calorie deficit is going to be, that's, that's hard. Like you are going to feel that that's going to have an impact on energy levels, your ability to perform on the bike. And I would challenge you, Chris, instead of thinking about creating that four to 500 de- calorie deficit through not fueling your body and not, you know, nourishing yourself instead think, how can I get to a point where I can burn four to 500 more calories on the bike? And the answer with that is making yourself more capable of doing more work. And to do that, you have to nourish yourself. So more nourishment allows you to train harder, train more. And then that allows you to then get to a point where You can maintain what you want to maintain, but you don't have to do it by driving or by starving yourself. Instead, it's just by doing more work. I want to say to something John's focused, he used the word like, yes, eat quality food a whole bunch of times. And I want to make sure that's not, Hmm. that's kind of close to clean, but Chris, it's more of the, uh, this is scientific, healthy diet, eat fibrous vegetables, eat that during the day. And there's a, there's a point, I forget the exact amount, but it's not more is better, like linearly for how healthy you are. There is a point where if you eat enough fibrous vegetables each day, more is not better. And like, you know, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, these sort of things. You do that, uh, you eat fruits too. And, uh, and you get some healthy fat and then you get your two, uh, two, uh, grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. You do that, whatever else you do, as far as science says, does not impact your health. If you eat some Snickers afterwards, or you like some gummy bears and that sort of stuff, it's like you get your base foundation down of eating. And then if you're riding your bike and you do a whole bunch of, uh, sports drink, your health outcome doesn't change, uh, relative than if you just ate like broccoli the whole time on the bike, um, your probably health outcome would be better because you're feeling better right inside of that. So if you get your base down 
uh, it's great. And then you can eat to hunger. Another thing, Chris, it, it's, it's very interesting. You talk about reducing your percent of body fat rather than losing weight. And, uh, man, I, I've been doing this and my, my body composition has improved a bunch while I haven't, uh, lost weight. I think I've actually gained weight, but my body fat's gone down. And for masters, for anybody who wants to do this, you're not concerned about weight. You had weight training to it and you cannot be in a caloric deficit and you can switch your body comp. So you can, you don't turn fat to muscle, but you'll lose fat and you gain or maintain muscle because of the protein intake that you're doing. And what happens is your body just looks a lot better, like relative to, you know, Western pop culture. Um, and you're, you're, you're fitter and you're stronger and you can do more stuff. And that's a real fun way to, to live. Cause you don't, you're not hungry. Like you eat to being full and you lift weights and you get, you know, your abs show more. Uh, it's, it's, it's really cool. So I would also recommend doing that. Um, it's not a bad way to live at all. And then you don't have to be in a caloric deficit for that to happen. Remember we did this with the DEXA. Remember when I, yeah. I did it in a caloric deficit too, where I lost seven pounds of body fat and then gained four pounds of muscle. And I, mm -hmm. so I, the scale had, had me lose three pounds, but that was a, that was a big, I don't know if you remember John, but I, oh, I yeah. felt like I looked different. Um, you didn't see me, I mean, I had clothes on and stuff, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But a substantial difference. Well, and, and Chris is already doing mobility and flexibility, which is not restful uh, for anybody that's done productive mobility and flexibility. That's very uncomfortable. Your heart rate's going to go up when you're doing as well. When you say you're doing resistance training for 30 to 45 minutes, like that's great. That's awesome. You're already doing a lot there. So, um, don't focus on your, in my, my personal advice here, Chris, uh, not a scientist, not a doctor, neither of those things. But the one thing that I will say is don't focus on your 1650 calories. Like don't worry about that. Instead, uh, you're already doing a ton of activity. Give your body the benefit of the doubt. Give your body the fuel that it needs. Like Nate said, when I talk about quality, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking fibrous vegetables, fruit, give yourself whole grains, do that sort of stuff. You'll really start to enjoy the cool variety of food that you eat as well. Um, I like to make sure I have a lot of color in my bowl and it makes me, it's cool. So you, once you do that and fuel yourself, I think it's a much more sustainable approach because Chris, like you're saying, it's hard. Uh, the, the case that Chris poses here sounds impossible to hit, right? It's really tough, but a more pot instead, try not to find ways to close down your avenues, but to open up more avenues for yourself. And this is a much better way to do it. I think. But, and you can enjoy in and out once in a while, right? Totally. You just don't want to yes. have that be the base, the basically that if we, mm -hmm. uh, not the food pyramid, but the base of your nutrition, don't have it be uh, processed food with stuff, but you can have processed food in your diet and you're not going to like die and ro roll over of cancer. That's what it makes a thing. That's what pop culture makes you think. Like if I eat two wheat thins during the day, I'm going to end up living five years less or something like I'm not going to be able to function yeah. because I ate processed food, which uh, is like prove it. There's, it's not the yeah. case. Um, geez, I just lost like so many Instagram followers and we have so many messages. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, good for techies. you though, for I saying eat. in and out instead of Popeyes. Like I'm proud of you. That was good. <laughs> That's because I just had in and out like this weekend. You, but... <laughs> <laughs> I thought we yeah. were on the same page, Nate. I thought we were yeah. team Popeyes, but team Popeyes. Whatever. Uh, we have some great uh, discussion going on in the in the live chat as well. So if you're listening to this, you can join us on YouTube. Usually it's live every Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific or it premieres at that time. And you can jump in there in the live chat and share some thoughts too. Alex, uh, do you have something else to say on this too? Yeah, I just wanted to wrap it up with kind of how I've approached like that negative relationship with food is I've put a big focus on enjoying food and I'll probably get a lot of hate for this, but that is why I don't eat oatmeal. I absolutely hate oatmeal. And I feel like there's this like view, right? Like if I'm enjoying food, then there's something bad in it. And I think mm -hmm. that's really kind of what I tried to get around with. Like Nate was talking about it with the pancakes, but it's like, I have pancakes before I work out because I love pancakes. And if I'm going to go freaking slash myself for three hours, like I'm not going to suffer through oatmeal and then go suffer through this three hour interval workout. Like I'm going to get pancakes, which are going to fuel me the same way and then be excited and fueled for this workout. And I, and I've kind of tried to take that approach everywhere. <laughs> I've always struggled this with this when traveling, cause I've never been able to figure out what Jen puts on vegetables that makes them taste so good. But <laughs> when traveling, yeah. I, I make the same oh. thing and, and it turns out like, 
completely different. So it's love. <laughs> love, love is real when it goes into food. I swear. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sprinkle it on. <laughs> Salt bay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So just really trying to like, and I think, um, like Nate's done it with like the air fryer, something that's easy to make and taste good. Like if you can do that to vegetables, like score, I think that's, totally. that's, that's a big thing, right? Like we all reach for Oreos cause they taste good and there's nothing wrong with Oreos, but again, they can't be the base of your food pyramid. So trying to make other things as enjoyable and desirable as that. I've got a new tip. I sh I'm not going to do a video on, maybe I will, but so take your Brussels sprouts, half Brussels sprouts, you could buy them fresh or frozen. And then you put in the air fryer and you spray them. I was laughing. You spray them for a second with <laughs> avocado oil yeah. and then you fry them up for a while until they start to get really brown and crispy. And then at the store, you can buy uh, a balsamic reduction. It's already done. Mm -hmm. Then you put that over it, you mix it up some more, you fry it a little bit longer. And then I bought slivered almonds. And then you put it in mm -hmm. a bowl and you, you put sl uh, slivered almonds on it. And the balsamic where it's crispy, the air fryer with the avocado <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the almond, oh, that, that is a, delicious. for like health, like for that, when we talk about that base of health period, that's hitting a whole bunch of stuff right? Mm -hmm. And it tastes delicious and it's dead simple to make. Mm -hmm. That is a great thing to do. And, um, I actually like, look forward to that. It's not a, mm -hmm. I, I have to be the first spots. It's like, Ooh, I get caramelized, like a balsamic gooey stuff with a little bit of like avocado crunch on it. How good does that sound? See, like, that's a nutritional win easy. right there. If you can make exactly. vegetables exciting, like kudos. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to know the fundamental difference between an air fryer and a toaster oven. Oh, like, we do oh, not, yeah. we do no, not no, have enough a, time no. for this debate yeah, right now. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you, Ivy, and it depends on the air fryer. But so air fryer is, is closer to a convection oven, but the amount of air in it, the, the air is, uh, the fan in it is so much more that it dries out the, the food. And when you fry something, that's actually what's happening when you fry something in oil is the outside's getting dried out and that's where you get the crunchiness. So what what happens with the air fryer is it's not to the extent of a fryer but it's much higher than a convection oven and it also cooks faster and what you get is a crispy outside of food without having to fry it and there are so many things on this um, got a bunch of oil but and quick and act stuff. now if you order now we'll throw in another air fryer and free shipping <laughs> I have two air, air fryer evangelists no, we're, we're, this has started it's happening just just hold on so i, I have two air fryers i have a, a the ninja one with the basket which i really like i've had other ones because it's easy that you can take out the basket you can put in the the dishwasher if you need to but that's good for like loose stuff or stuff that doesn't need to be perfectly evenly cooked like broccoli or that um mm. the uh, brussels sprouts or if i like reheat something reheat a meal from a uh, restaurant instead of putting it in the the microwave it tastes a lot better most of the time inside the air fryer and mm. i also have a toaster oven that is the ninja one i like the ninja that's also an air fryer and that has a flat basket and that is really good for cooking stuff that needs uniformity or uh might um and stuff that doesn't drip so in there i might like put french fries, french fries. yep french fries um i'm gonna do tonight uh i have two pieces of salmon and what i do is just put uh, uh trader joe's has like a citrus citrus blend of spices so you put that on it you put it in at 375 for like 14 minutes it comes out perfectly the the skin on the bottom is crispy and then the other air fryer you're making brussels sprouts and then i have in a uh a rice cooker and I'm making brown rice. And Amazing. that is a, it takes like five minutes to prep and it's really easy to clean up and nothing splatters anywhere. And that is a very, uh, it's delicious. You get the quality, like the, the, the quality, the base, you know, the things that you need. Mm -hmm. And then for dessert, you can have whatever you want. I made bread pudding from stale bread and that's a nice treat too, on top of it. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it's gonna be a good if you night. Just, if you just have a regular oven, just so we're clear, baking sheet, Throw some broccoli on, a little bit of oil, a little bit of paprika, a little bit of salt, throw it in, crispy. So no, it won't be as crispy though as the air fryer and will take longer. Uh, True. That's the, that's the difference. It, it won't taste as You know, as you good. bring up a good point. I, I, I have not yet made the air fryer jump much to Nate's chagrin. You can see on Instagram our <laughs> battle with this constantly, but, uh, just Nate brings up a great point. <laughs> this is like the yeah. epic. We actually all I heard don't the eye the... roll, Nate. <laughs> just I don't need the brain. <laughs> uh, uh, epic is the best. Yeah, there we go. I, the thing is, Nate's always right. I'm just a lot slower to arrive at it. That's that's the thing I'm learning. But um, the, the thing about this that's really important, and we're going to go into rapid fire after this, um, but the thing about it that's, yeah, it won't be rapid. We're, we're staying on thing, this. The thing that's important with this is if you have a long, drawn-out process, 
that's going to discourage you from cooking that sort of food. If you have something where the food is subpar or difficult to prepare, that's going to stop or discourage you from making it. If you have this kitchen gadget that expedites everything, makes it taste really good, does all that stuff, I'm going to contradict myself. I don't know why you would not own it, right? So it's it's really helpful if you can afford such things. It can be really helpful because it makes easy wins for nutrition a lot easier. Um, so it's, yeah, helps those Pro healthy tip. choices. Don't put all the pressure on yourself, in other words, to have to shop correctly, buy all the very fresh vegetables only, chop them up, store them properly, you know, meal prep for 17 hours on one day. You know, it's like, there's a, on you that, can either make it, hard or easy on yourself, right? There's so. very little study that show that frozen vegetables are any worse for you. Just, just so we're all clear. I so. think it's actually better. Uh, a lot of times there's more nutrients in frozen, uh, berries and vegetables than ones that are fresh because they get to be, they get like air quotes locked in when they freeze mm -hmm. it rather than, uh, sitting it, it depends on what it is there's actually some canned stuff too that's higher than fresh stuff which is crazy but it's individual uh you can sure. look it up and it's individual lower temperatures to slow down to atoms so the atoms don't react with one another <laughs> there's nerdy alex <laughs> two, two air fryers in. put them on sorry no john we're staying here <laughs> two air fryers <laughs> Put them on uh, <laughs> two different circuits in your kitchen because so many times you trip it. Oh, like, yeah. yeah. At least in the U.S. Uh, with, with our uh, electric stuff. So you got to put it on two different ones. But having two air fryers cooking two different things on food at the same time, it's so easy. And then, uh, again, rice is super easy. Um, and, then, ooh, um, I can never say this word. Uh, what's the Greek tzatziki sauce? Is that how you say it? Yeah, tzatziki. Yeah. 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 So you can get a, yeah. like Trader Joe's has this or other places, you get like a dill cucumber tzatziki sauce. So mm. I just made that. You have the Brussels sprouts, you have the brown rice, and you have the salmon. So the salmon comes out and then you just, all you gotta do is put a spoon in it and put it on top. And you've got tzatziki salmon with balsamic Brussels sprouts with almond and brown rice that you can then mix it in, you know, take the, the, the mine is blown. Yeah, we got to end the, I got to go eat. Like I'm not really hungry now. <laughs> this sounds so good. If I actually make this tonight, I will show a picture, but the, the, the time it takes is like seriously five minutes of prep and it's amazing. And then you're happy. I think you missed be... your calling, Nate. I think you need to be in Costco, you know, like one of those guys on the stands with the, yeah. the mic and everything. Yeah. Well, so if that's but watch, thing, you... now we got salmon over here. But then you do variations. <laughs> so you just switch the protein out for a meal or you switch the vegetable out or you switch the, uh, like you do uh, couscous instead of uh, brown rice. You just sure. kind of switch each. Then you have like all these meals and that's the basis of cooking or you do noodles instead of it. And then you've got a whole different style of recipe. Um, yeah. It's like salmon teriyaki with noodles and broccoli. But it's still kind of the same real three easy things. We we just changed the name of the cooking show to Cooking with Pete and Nate. So that's, <laughs> yeah, it's going to happen. Cuisinart, okay, if you're listening and want to get into cycling, we're here for you. <laughs> yeah. It's no sponsors nice to on find this podcast. your passion. If you like this video, make sure you give us a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, you can give it a thumbs down, but let us know what you would have done differently in the comments below. If you want to see more of these videos, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you want to become a faster cyclist, check out trainerroad.com. Do it.